Hi everybody, this is Martin and welcome to I'm Probably Playing It Wrong, a uh, micro game playthrough. And right now I am probably playing wrong a micro game called Space Shift by uh, the designer Lucas Gentry. And uh, here's the game all set up already on my table. And this is a button shy game. Button shy, of course, very famous for uh, their wallet games. So you can see designed by Lucas Gentry, uh, art, and uh, this is a company run by a gentleman named Jason Tagmeyer, who's a very great friend to the solo gaming and print and play, print and play gaming community. Okay, so what is this game? It is a micro game where uh, you are going through space, you have a tiny, tiny ship, and um, you have a little bit of money, and um, your goal is to uh, trade, is to buy and sell, buy low, sell high, upgrade your ship. Eventually, your win conditions are, uh, if you have two Xeno crystals in your cargo space, you win the game. Uh, if your ship is ever reduced to zero points of hull strength, you lose. And if your enemy, yes, this game has an enemy, ever obtains two Xeno crystals, you lose the game. So what are Xeno crystals? There are these things over here. That's a Xeno crystal, and as you can see, it costs 20 mega credits. That's a lot of money here in the galaxy. How much money do you have right now? Uh, to start, you only have three mega credits um, here with your rookie crew, with your uh, basic ship, the Blue Herring. It was so cheap it costs free. It only has a maximum cargo of two. So your cargo space is over here. And you have basic shields for your ship. Uh, the maximum shields for your ship are set to one. So this is your kind of starting setup right over here. And as you can see, you're only starting with three mega credits. And eventually you have to get not just one, but two of these Xeno crystals, which cost 20 mega credits each. And you have to be careful because if your enemy who's over here, uh, your enemy is named, uh, let's see, what's his name? Kinglan, Kinglan, the Marauder leader. Um, every time one of these uh, Xeno crystals leaves this row, uh, Kinglan is going to rotate his card. So right now, four is at the top. If one of these Xeno crystals were to leave this, this resource row here, then you would um, rotate the card and it would become a three. And if that uh, another um, mega, I'm sorry, Xeno crystal left this resource row here, then you would rotate the card two, etc. And if it ever gets to one, then um, then you remove one Xeno crystal from the game. And that makes it much harder for you to win. And then, because there are only three Xeno crystals in the game, and remember, you need at least two to win. Now, if, uh, if it gets to this point, then what you do is King Lan, you flip his card over, and then as you'll notice now, King Lan only has two numbers. So on the second uh, row, if you've allowed Kingland to acquire a, um, a Xeno Crystal, uh, then it's going to be even easier for him to acquire the second one. And if he ever acquires that second one, if his card ever looks like this, then you lose the game because it will be impossible for you at that point to acquire the two uh, Xeno Crystals you need to be able to win the game. Okay, so that's a very, very brief overview of uh, the game here. And these are all multi-use cards. So every card has a colony side, which kind of tells you what could potentially be going on. You'll have an orbital encounter. You'll have a planet side encounter. And then it'll tell you what the uh, marketplace prices are for various goods to buy and sell. Um, over here, And so this is called the colony row. And then over here, you have the uh, what's called the upgrade row. So you flip the cards over. So you got the you got the colony side on on uh, that side. You flip them over here, then the upgrade row, and then these green uh, parts of the cards tell you what are your possible upgrades in this turn. So here we've got an automated repair unit. Here we have the, a new ship, the Riptide. If I have four mega credits, uh, I'll be able to upgrade to this new ship. And it now has a maximum cargo space of three. So it'll, it'll allow me to carry one more cargo than I can, currently can carry. And over here, um, if I chose to get this upgrade for six mega credits, I'd get an expert trader. And um, he produces two mega credits starting on the turn after hiring. So this guy makes it cheaper for me to buy things. So those are the available upgrades right now. And then over here, uh, if you flip that card over to show its resource, 
So these are the resources that are currently available for me to purchase. I could purchase an asteroid, some liquid fuel, some spare parts, etc., etc. And you'll notice there's no prices uh, on the um, resources because all of that is dictated by what is currently the rightmost card here in the colony row. So um, multi-use cards and kind of an ingenious uh, way that the cards move. So um, basically, let's simulate the first turn, shall we? Uh, taking a turn uh, means, number one, we will do the orbital phase. We'll resolve the orbital encounter on the leftmost card in the colony row. So here's the leftmost card in the colony row, and we'll resolve the orbital encounter. So what does that say? Bad waypoint codes cause you to arrive late to the market. Uh-oh. All resources cost plus one million to purchase and minus one to sell during the market phase. So this is bad for us because we want to make money and this makes the cost of goods more expensive and the cost to sell those goods in our, uh, in our uh, cargo hold uh, cheaper. We will get less money to sell them. So this is not a good uh, thing to start with, this orbital encounter. Okay. So we resolve that, and then we move on to what's called the planet side phase. Resolve the planet side encounter on the middle card in the colony row. So for the middle card, we'd look over here to the planet side encounter. Ah, a spy is looking to trade ships. You may purchase an available ship for the difference in cost between your ship and the new one. Well, uh, very early in the game here, um, that's not really a great uh, thing to have because our ship currently is free. And we only have three mega credits to start. So let's take a look over here in the upgrade side if there are any ships for sale. In fact, there is one, the Riptide. As you can see, it costs four mega credits. Uh, we can't afford it. We don't have enough money to buy this ship right now. So we are unable to resolve that planet side encounter. Thank you for your offer, Spy, to trade ships, but uh, we just don't have the money right now. And then. What is the next thing? The market phase, optional. You can buy items, resources, and Xeno crystals. So those are those guys up there. You can buy some resources or Xeno crystals. Uh, but remember, because of the planet side of the orbital encounter, uh, they're now more expensive and they're going to be cheaper to sell. Now, it doesn't really matter because we don't have anything in our cargo hold right now, so we have nothing to sell. But anyway, um, if we were gonna buy something, it would be more expensive. Um, so buy items, resources, and Xeno crystals available in the resource row and or sell resources using the marketplace prices on the rightmost colony card. So what would, if we, do, if we wanted to buy something from this resource row right now, we would look at the prices here in the rightmost colony card. This guy right here. And so it would be uh, asteroids, 1 million, really 2 million, because of this uh, orbital encounter. Uh, if we wanted to buy some spare parts, it would be five, um, 5 mega credits. I'm sorry, I've been saying million, it's mega credits. Uh, liquid fuel, 7 mega credits, and pluranium, 5 mega credits. So there's really, everything is very expensive here. Really, the only thing that we could afford would be these asteroids for 1 mega credit, or really 2, because we have 3. Now, what's the likelihood that we could sell that for a profit? Well, we could get some sort of uh, indication by these other marketplace cards. Mm, if uh, we could turn in a little profit here if we bought at one or two and then sold at three. Uh, if we bought at two over here, this would not be a good one because uh, we, it would only sell at two. So asteroids is really the cheapest thing that you can buy and sell. So really, right now, the only thing we can do on this turn is buy one asteroid uh, for two mega credits. Uh, and we only have three mega credits. So uh, our choices for this first turn are either do that, buy an asteroid uh, at an inflated price, or um, do nothing. And so right now I'm going to choose to do nothing. So what happens? Okay, we've gone through these three, tur these three phases of the turn, and so now we have to go and resolve our shifting cards. Once you have completed the three phases, prepare the next turn as follows. Flip the rightmost colony card to the upgrade side and place it at the leftmost position in the upgrade row. So that means this guy right over here needs to get flipped from its colony side to its upgrade side, like so. And gets moved over here to the leftmost part of the upgrade row. Now what's next? 
rotate the rightmost upgrade row card so that its resource Xeno Crystal End is up, and then place it at the leftmost position in the resource row. So by the same token, this card over here gets flipped to its resource side. Sorry, flipped, rotated rather to its resource side, which is liquid fuel, and then gets placed to the leftmost position of the resource row right there. And then the final shift that we do is uh, flip the rightmost resource row card to the colony side and then place it at the leftmost position in the colony row, then see if the enemy advances. So the rightmost card over here gets flipped to its colony side like so, and then gets placed to the leftmost position here. And then once you've done all that flipping and uh, does a Xeno crystal go down to the colony. Uh, it doesn't yet, but it will on the next turn. So that's not good. This is actually not a really good start for this game, folks. Uh, I'm just saying, uh, if I were to continue playing this, I would probably lose. Um, great, so, uh, and then once we do that, then we can move on to our next turn. So then we would go through these three uh, phases once again of the next turn. So let me just show you what that looks like now. First is we'll resolve the orb of the first orbital encounter. Uh, a damaged vessel needs critical parts. Receive two points of damage to gain a pluranium if available in the resource row and if you have cargo space. So I, I kind of like that, right? Because pluranium um, costs quite a bit of money over here. So, but we have to receive two points of damage. So right now our shields are at zero. And if we receive two points of damage, we go one, two. And that's about as much damage as we can take because if we take another one, boom, that's it, that's the end. So we're actually at uh, red alert right now, <laughs> condition red. Um, but you know what, we're doing it for the money. We're taking some pluranium. Aha, but it looks like my uh, action was um, pre uh, premature because as it turns out, there is no pluranium up here in the resource row at all. So we actually can't do that. We can't avail. So I'm gonna put my uh, shields back to uh, the zero level over here. Uh, we are not able to take advantage of this orbital encounter. Okay, so we tried and we can't resolve it. So now we move on to the planet side encounter. Out of work mechanics offer to help with repairs. You may repair your ship to full hull and shields for a total of two mega credits. Um, since we haven't taken any damage, we are at full hull and shields currently for our ship. This doesn't help us either. So uh, then we move on to uh, can we buy something? Can we buy something over here at the marketplace? Uh, asteroids are three mega credits, spare parts are three mega credits, liquid fuel is three mega credits, pluranium is seven. Um, we know we don't have any pluranium up here, but we could buy an asteroid for three mega credits. That's pretty expensive, I think. We could buy some uh, liquid fuel for three, from spare parts for three. Uh, that potentially, that spare parts and liquid fuel could be a good deal. It's, if we could buy it at uh, three and then sell it for seven, we'd make, or six, that would make a tidy little profit. So maybe, may, it would wipe us out though. We've only got those three mega credits. So probably I will buy some liquid fuel and there just happens to be some liquid fuel up here in the resource row. So I'll spend the three mega credits. One, two, three. Now I got no money whatsoever, but I get to take this liquid fuel over here and put it in our cargo hold. So now one of the two spots in our cargo hold is used up by some liquid fuel that we purchased for three mega credits as dictated by the rightmost card in the colony row. So now hopefully it, uh, we, with the next colony we fly to, uh, this liquid fuel costs more money uh, the, the price, the selling price is higher, and then we'll be able to turn a profit. And the game, uh, that's really how the game goes. So I'm going to pause right here. And that was my very, very brief um, overview of how to play the game Space Shipped by Lucas Gentry, a wallet game from Button Shy Games. And remember, um, 
I am probably playing it wrong. I actually don't think I am because I was uh, referring to these rules pretty well. So I think that um, I haven't made any game mistakes yet uh, in explaining this game to you. So until next time, this has been Martin, and we'll catch you next time on my playthrough channel. I'm probably playing it wrong.